Hi guys, how are you? I hope that you're experiencing a little nicer spring weather than to what I experience at the moment. It's not really cold, this is a nice thing. Like, other than some of the other years, we're in February now and it could be like really completely frozen and snowed over and we're really lucky that that is not the case but it's it's kind of mild that is a nice thing but it's always a rain and i just quickly ran out in between two range house to show you one area that i want to tackle because what i want to do on um, this afternoon and i think tomorrow as well go inside and do a little building and construction project again so i need to channel my inner handyman so fingers crossed that this got to work out but you can tell maybe that i'm standing in this um midsection area of the garden where the front garden kind of just like goes into the midsection of the garden there's kind of like the narrow pathway here with our big topiary piece and there is something lying here that absolutely does not belong there it does belong there but not the way it, <laughs> it looks at the moment so this is a wisteria and the wisteria a couple of years ago there was trying to grow onto the house but then we did like a complete new plastering at the house and put new color on it and decided to not put the wisteria back on and it wasn't there for many years it was there maybe for i don't know two or three years so it hasn't grown to such a big size but I didn't want to lose it anyways and I thought maybe I could train it as a tree and I built some sort of support system where some people were gossiping it kind of looked like a spy antenna I'm going to show you in a second and now after the very strong last gale that we had that one just collapsed and yeah I needed to th I need to think of something else I need to think of something new and something maybe nicer that kind of just like is a little more aligned with the aesthetics of the house and like the swing bench that is over there in the front garden so everything just makes sense together and this is exactly what I want to do so first thing I'm going to do is just quickly flip the phone and show you how the situation is talk you through and then I'm go inside and start building because the rain honestly starts picking up right now again. All right, the rain starts picking up, but still I want to show you how the situation is. So this is the flower bed in front of the kitchen window, the one on the left. There's a kitchen window and this is the dining room. Well, everything is op uh, open floor concept inside, but there's like where the dinner table is. Um, so this is a flower bed south facing, really basking in the sun. And you can tell I went in here and stripped everything back already. And if I swing to the left, you get to see, well, two kind of like ugly concrete pillars. One I'm trying to mask already, and I think this is going to work out quite well. And for the second one, I have an idea. So originally, those were built there because the terrace was supposed to be bigger, and then that didn't happen. But now we have these pillars here. But I have an idea on what I'm going to do with the one on the right. But today's video is not about that. Today's video is about the wisteria and you see already how it looks. It's just like a massive huge tangle at the moment. And to be fair, it's not even bad that it came down because what I can do is really get in here and trim it back properly and um, maybe a little more thorough to what I've done it in the past years. But you can tell all these branches here that are twisted. This is actually the wisteria. And then you see one straight cane just common here that one here this is the old support system so that is a hazel cane and then at the top i build this kind of like triangle three-dimensional triangle with a lot of canes in there so the wisteria could grow inside and it did it kind of worked but what i want to do is really get in here and just remove all of these branches going to talk you through tomorrow i think uh, more into detail how to prune a wisteria properly because february is a good time actually to prune your wisteria so this is what i'm going to do but one quick thing that i just want to talk about as well is if we just look at this barren field lying in front of us how important winter structure in your garden is or evergreens are so this is a euphorbia it's a mediterranean variety that i really love and it is a little iffy on how it is going to perform with our climate zone here. So this is why I put it south facing with a house in the back. And last year we had quite a harsh winter and we had really cold temperatures with clear blue skies, which is beautiful in theory, but it really suffered, but the plant survived. So it is really resilient and a lot more to what the climate zone might actually say on the label. This winter it looks a lot better. Very happy with that. Just loving these like yeah like mauve color kind of tips that it produces and this is where it got to start flowering at one point this year but even better and this shows me how happy the plant actually is i have got offspring i've got little seedlings here there's more at the back so what i intend on doing is actually to maybe end of this year just let the seedlings really establish and then i'm going to transplant them over to the side over there so i have a second clump because i think that this bed definitely benefits from more structure because here on the left i have two box spheres and they are actually nice 
reflecting the massive big toe period on the right side. So I'm really missing something in here as well. But this is another project what I'm going to do now because rain really starts picking up. I'm going to run inside and start working on my support system for the wisteria. It's a new day, clearly it is a new day, but I'm really happy because I've managed it. Here it is, this is the support system that I built. I'm really happy with it because I think it looks well good. It is quite sturdy, that is a good thing. Just carrying it outside, I can already tell you that it was not wonky or anything, and this is the one important thing you want to have. I used a lot of screws and everything, so what I want to do in a second is just show you up close what I did, talk you through a little bit how it should work, and then also tackle this here, the wisteria. I'm really going to get in there with my parasecretaries and cut it back, cut back all of the old support system that is still in there. Because we're in February and February is a month which is actually good for pruning wisteria. But I'm going to talk you through in a second everything step by step what I'm going to do. So here it is and I think already on a first glance you can tell that in terms of aesthetics it works quite well. Like the pillars that are there in the back supporting our top balcony, they're also white and then the balcony is also made of white wood. So this kind of reflects it and then if I swing to my right into the front garden, maybe slowly so you don't get motion sick, there's Alfie and there is a swing bench. Like the bench is not there at the moment but at least a frame and that's also made of white wood. So everything in terms of like style I think is very cohesive and aligned and this is the one thing that I try to make sure whatever new element I try to introduce to this area it all makes sense at least in terms of aesthetics. So let me just walk into the border with you and give you a closer look on what I did actually. So I've used four pillars and I've painted everything with an outdoor paint in a white. So three very thin layers to make sure that hopefully it doesn't chip off easily. Um, it's a good color. This is the one thing I would advise you buy a color that comes with a certain quality. I bought one that is used for painting Scandinavian houses like Swedish houses because I thought okay that must be a good quality when the color can withstand that climate in Scandinavia. At the base I've used these four spikes. They're made of plastic. They're very long. Um, I put screws in and they will be buried into the ground. I'm not going to put concrete in because I have four pillars and I think that this will be enough if I just bury it well. If I see that the wind um, knocks it down or starts knocking it down, I might come in again and just put some concrete in there, but for now I won't. Then I have these ledges here and I always put four screws into the ledges to make sure that they support it fairly well. Then I uh, put some paint over it just to make sure that they kind of disappear. Here on the top what I want to do is, um, once the entire structure is in position, I'm going to release these two ledges here on top. 
um, like the ones, oh, where's my finger? Now the game starts again. Those two here, because then I can come with a wisteria and put it in the middle of this framework and then close it off again. So it is not just attached, it is really locked inside the support system. So this is how I envisioned it. But before I'm going to put this into position, the first thing I'm going to do is tackle the beauty over here. When it comes to pruning wisteria, there are two numbers that you can remember quite easily, and it is two and seven. And two and seven are the month and also the system on how you prune your wisteria. So two for February and seven for July, and we are in February, so it is the perfect time to prune a wisteria right now. What I want to do is, obviously, I still have all of this old support system in here, which I'm going to cut out in a second. But what else I'm going to do is really inspect it and check it now, and just put, um, tag out everything that's looking too spindly and tiny branches where I can just see they are not doing any good. So I have very small branches here where I know, okay, they can go for sure. But then I have a lot of these branches here that clearly I cut back because you have these cutting points here. And in theory, theory, how it works in February is like you would just prune back and you would always count like where the leaf axes are. So I would just go back to like one, two and make a cut there because two and seven Two stands for the month of February and for the leaf axis that you count and then you make a cut. In July you would do the same thing but there you would count basically to seven leaf axis and cut back to seven. And this is all there is to pruning wisteria. It's actually quite easy. Um, since I am training this to be more a tree I think I'll be a little more thorough with the way I'm, how I prune it because I want to make sure that it kind of grows into a certain tree shape. Let's see. I'm not an expert with wisteria per se, because my parents didn't have it. I didn't grow up with a wisteria, but I've seen on different garden channels and how people um, train it and how people cut it. I've one back at the garage and that blooms beautifully. So I think I kind of know how it works and how to do it properly. So all I do now is really get in here, count one, two, make a cut, work my way through. But before I do that, the very first thing is I'm really trying to get out all of the support system, take out all of these spindly small branches and then really reduce it and also make a decision which branches should stay in general. If there's anything where I feel like it's growing inwards or kind of just like um, too dense or it doesn't make sense, I would take these branches out as well.
I've made it and I couldn't be happy. I think it looks well good. And especially when I tried to squeeze the wisteria in the support system, there was a momentum where I thought maybe I should have measured the entire thing before and just think about how big the spacing in between the four pillars actually should be. But luck was on my side. It works. It worked well. It is definitely secure. I tried to shake it a little bit and yeah, it's really good and established in there. I think I get around the entire concrete part of it this time. What happened though is when I was digging the hole, at one point I hit something hard in the ground and I was like, oh, what is that? But I was not intrigued enough to do a deep investigation. So there's something in there, I suppose, I don't know, maybe concrete, who knows? I really, I don't know. It was, it was almost flat. It just, the spade hit always on the entire same uh, depth actually. So I don't really know what is in there, but I don't care at this point. I was like, whatever. It's well anchored, it looks good. And I'm just gonna give you a closer look at it now again. I want to show you from this angle as well and you also get to see that in the top here I still have my Christmas lights in here so this is one thing I might need to do in a second just get them out but here you go this is how it looks I couldn't be happier with the result honestly um, you can tell at the base I just walk a little closer that the black plastic spikes are still poking out a little bit but not too much this is still all right and it is all safe and sound this is the most important thing about it so let me just show you how the entire thing works. So the wisteria comes out as like a multi-branch here at the base. And then it just winds up all the way up in here. And this is where I pushed it into the support system. And that is like the canopy. So maybe I just walk out a little bit so you get to see it from a distant view again to see how it looks as kind of a tree already a little bit. So if we look from this angle, you really get to see that on top of there, all these branches start forming a nice canopy, which is nice. And one little hint of advice. Oh my God, look, I really need to do something about like, how the situation looks underneath a terrace that is not really appealing. Well, another day, another project. But one last hint of advice, if you try and doing something like this, and this is something that I haven't thought about before, is that um, on this area here, which is going to be kind of like the trunk of a tree, still a lot of leaves are coming. And I think the more it matures, the less it will be. But this is something at least two, three times a year I need to get in there and strip it off. It goes very fast. It's like you don't even prune it. I just really go in with my hands and just like push them off. But this is something you might need to uh, think about. Because otherwise, it looks nothing like a tree. If I leave all the leaves on, it really just looks like a green blob, actually. But so far, so good. I think this is a good start for the wisteria for this year. You guys, that is it for today's project. I hope you enjoyed and had fun with that because I absolutely had. The more I do these like building things, even though I'm not a pro with that, the more I discover how much fun it actually is because you do build your own things that are unique. You do things that you can't buy anyway that you're not going to see in other gardens. And this is just like a nice thing, I feel, because then you... Um, you can give your own stamp or your own perspective into your own garden and that's just so much fun. There's nothing better than that. I'm standing on the terrace now. So this is kind of like the view that I have when I'm standing on the terrace. So the wisteria is a little more on like eye level. But the nice thing about it as well is it kind of acts a little bit as a, a parasol, parasol, umbrella, as an umbrella here. Uh, because uh, it is south-facing. So when we're sitting on the terrace in high summer, it really gives you a little bit of nice protection. So there are people that can sit in the full sun, but there are also areas that are a little more um, shaded by the wisteria. So this is also one of the really nice advantages that kind of just happened after the wisteria came off the wall from the house and into the support system. But yeah, that's just like a little side fact. Hope you have fun with that. And I would really love to welcome you in one of my future videos very soon again. Have a wonderful day, guys. Bye.